I have a hard time putting together a mother's lesson. I've tried to do it a number of times, and I'm not sure that I've ever put a very good one together. Those were good words, Helen, in that song. I was a grown person. I got the privilege of going back home to meet my mother, to be in her home for the first time after my mother and father split up when I was three years of age. I told my mother that God had called me to be a minister. And I wanted her to be a part of my life, if she wanted to be. I was 25 years of age. I think for the very first time in my whole life, I told my mother, thank you for being mother. Mother is in heaven today. I'm glad for that. And we might not have had many physical years to live with one another, but we're going to have all eternity. And I'm going to tell her, Helen, when I get there, how thankful for the fact that she loved me in spite of the fact that I was just a handful of weeds. How can we ever improve upon that? Wow. Wow. I told you this is a hard lesson, a hard place for me today. I prayed all week hard on this lesson, and I want to share it with you from my heart. Mothers are special folks. And today is your day. I heard a pastor say that his gift for mothers on their day was this. I hope I can do this. To be short and precise with the lesson so that they could get to their family time on time. I want that to happen for you, all of you mothers. The text that God led me to this week was found in 1 Timothy chapter number 5. And I'll have Steve put this on the screen for us. Great passage of scripture, and it has a lot to say, and I thought about it all week. And I wrote out a few notes that I want to share with you about this passage of Scripture found here in 1 Timothy chapter 5, the opening two verses. Here's what it says. Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exalt him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers. Older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters. And then I like this last part, with absolute what? Purity. With absolute purity. I believe Paul was instructing Timothy to do this. Want to know what it was? To honor the women in his life, to honor the women in his life. Timothy was a rich young man because he had a lot of women around him. Mothers, both biologically and spiritually, 
are to be shown honor and love. I hope all of you here today will choose to show your love to a special lady or ladies before this day is over. God gave me a question. It's actually the title of the lesson that I want to share with you this morning, and I'll, 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 I'll stick right to it and be brief. How are we treating our physical and spiritual mothers? How are we treating our physical and spiritual mothers? I want to share three ways that God showed me this week how we can treat our physical and spiritual mothers. Steve will put the screen the slide on. The first slide is this. The first way that we can show love to a special mom or a special lady is by showing her, what's the word? Honor. Honor. So I ask you this question. Steve will put the question on the screen for you. How do you show someone honor? Well, the answer to me is very simple. You honor them by spending time with them. You honor them by spending time with them or on them. Let me remind you, church, that mothers, both biological and spiritual, have poured themselves into our lives. Physically, mothers have changed numerous diapers before we learned how to take care of that process ourselves. Mothers have wore thousands of bottles and loads of clothes. Perhaps a mother has made a dozen trips to the ER in those youthful days when we were prone to accidents. Then, of course, mothers have made hundreds of trips to the ball fields, to the parades, to the scouts' dance lessons. I like the bumper sticker that says, I'm a soccer mother. But spiritually, mothers have taught us about God who sent his son to die for each one of us that we might have the gift of eternal life. Here's my point. Mothers made the effort to choose to spend time with each one of us. We ought to thank them for that. Mothers made the effort to spend time with each one of us. Scripture instructs us to give our mothers, the ladies who had an influence upon our lives, honor and time. Now, I'm not making the suggestion that you move back home, because they probably don't want that. But I am suggesting that you call home that you visit home, that you use the means of email and frequently check on them to see if they have needs. There are numerous gifts you might give this Mother's Day, and most of them are certainly good gifts. Can I make this suggestion? the greatest gift that you can give your physical or spiritual mother this day is your time. Is your time. I read where Mother Teresa said that there are many in the world who are dying for a piece of bread. And then she went on to say, but there are too many more dying for a little love. And friends, too many of those are mothers. 
So showing mom honor by giving the gift of time is one way to show your love. Can I make a suggestion that there's another way, I think, that God gave me that we can show love to that special lady in our life? Steve will put it on the screen for us. We can help her out. We can help her out. I read a Paul Harvey story this week. I thought it was really fantastic. Let me share it with you. I copied it. Let me tell you about three sons, he said, who left home and became quite prosperous in their own way. Getting back together, they decided that they would give something to their elderly mother. The first son said, here's what I'm going to do for mom. I'm going to build her a big house. She never had a house like that when we were growing up. The second son said, I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to send her a new Mercedes, and I'm going to provide her with a chauffeur. The third son smiled, and he said, I've got both of you beat. You remember how mother enjoyed reading the Bible? Well, now she can't see very well. So I have found this remarkable parrot. It took the elders 12 years to teach the parrot. All that mother has to do is name a chapter and a verse, and the parrot will recite it to her. Soon mother sent letters of thanks back to the three boys. Here's what the letters contain. Matt, the house you build is so huge. I can only live in one room, but I have to clean the whole house. (laughs) Jerry, she said, I'm getting too old to travel. I stay home most of the time, so I rarely use the Mercedes. And besides, that driver is so rude. Dearest Donald, she said, you have a good sense to know what your mother likes best. The chicken was delicious. (laughs) On a more serious note, I want you to know that Jesus gives us a super example about caring for the needs of mothers. It's found over in the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. Steve will put it on the screen for us, the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to John. And there's uh, three verses that I wanted to share with you, beginning with verse number 25. And I can just, I can just picture the scene and this actually happening. Here's what it says in that 25th verse. John gives us a recording of this. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Then he goes on to say his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. And then there's an interesting word that introduces verse 26. It says what? When. When Jesus saw his mother there, the foot of the cross, and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, here's what he said to his mother. Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, verse 27, he said these words. Here is your mother. And then John records for us from that time on, What did this disciple do? He took Jesus' mother, who became his mother, to her home. What is John suggesting there that we can do for our mothers? Well, I'm glad you asked. Steve put it on the screen for us. Jesus is dying on the cross for the sins of the world. And then we see this very important truth. 
he's still not too busy to see to it that his mother's physical needs are met. Wow. What a son. What a son. So here's my point, and Steve will put it on the screen for us. Give mom, give the mother of your children your honor and meet her needs. Amen? And then the third thing, and I'm going to be quick because my time's almost gone. Steve will put on the screen is this. The third way that we show love to our special mom today is to hear her out. Hear her out. Mothers have great wisdom to impart to us. Listen to the Solomon, perhaps the wisest man that ever lived. I got two verses. Steve will put them on the screen for us. In verse number eight of the first chapter, Proverbs, Solomon says these words to his son. He says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction. And then, do not forsake your mother's what? Teachings. And then he says in the t- middle of the book, these words in the 15th chapter and the 20th verse. A wise son brings joy to his father. But the contrast is this. A foolish man despises his mother. So I ask you the question, and Steve will put it on the screen for us. What is Solomon saying here? I think it's pretty easy to understand. Solomon is saying, listen to your mother. Not just your physical mother, but your spiritual mothers. And secondly, play, pay close attention to what she is saying. For that lady who has won your heart, men, has your best interest at heart. Amen? So let me wrap this up with this application. Steve will put it on the screen for us. We've looked at three ways we can show love to a special mom today. Show her honor. That means give her some time. Give her space. Help her out. Look at her. Jesus looked at his mother. He saw that she had a specific need, did he not? Meet her needs. And thirdly, he tells us, hear her out. Hear her out. Now I lost my closing thought. I'll find it here. Nope. Hold on. Here it is. I said a quick prayer. Mothers, ladies, no matter where you are on your journey, embrace the family God gave you. Knowing that God chose you and that God will empower you to be the mom, the lady of influence that all of those children deserve. And remember this, mothers, ladies of the church this morning. Family is God's idea. And he alone has the blueprint for making it succeed. I believe that with 
all of my heart. So I wrote this prayer. Father, thank you for all the mothers and the grandmothers and the ladies in church today. Guide them to be women who truly make a difference and help each of them to know this wonderful truth, Father, that their individual lives matter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, those are my thoughts on Mother's Day. I say it's a hard day because not all of us had the mothers that perhaps we wanted or maybe sometimes we weren't the mothers that we really wanted to be for you that are ladies. But God knows all about it, amen? And Helen, I wrote out while you were singing, a real mother is truly just fine with a handful of weeds. For that's exactly what any of us are. Mom, I know you can hear me today. Thanks for your love. That's the best gift we can give a mother, amen? Let's stand.